So up until now, we've implemented the actual overrides. There is a lot of functionality inside these overrides that uh, needs implementation as well. For instance, using the pricing class itself requires a session, and we need to first instantiate that session using the configuration we've set up in our in our pricing configuration variables, as we outlined in the variable definitions tutorial. So let's first go in and see how we're going to make use of this pricing class before we delve into further detail inside this class as to how we go about requesting the data to begin with. For this, we've written a fixed client class inside of which we're going to take a look at the pricing functionality first and how that is instantiated in terms of the session setup that we need to do. You'll notice that the very first thing in the initializer, the requested item is your configuration file. And this configuration file looks like what we talked about in the variable definitions video. You need to set your connection type to initiator inside this conf file. The other parameters as have been specified by the Darwin X ops team when creating your connections for you. And finally, the socket connect host, port, sender comp ID, target comp ID, and persist messages settings that have also been provided to you. Once you've set your configuration up, we now need to pass this configuration file to our session initializer that will then be passed to our fixed pricing class, because without a session, the fixed pricing class cannot be used to communicate with the fixed server. So the very first instance that we create is that of a fixed session using the username and password that we've been provided by DarwinX. We then instantiate the settings for this connection by initializing session settings using the configuration file that we just saw earlier. We also need to create what's called a store factory, and this is available through fix.filestorefactory using the settings object that was instantiated using our configuration variables as we saw earlier over here. Finally, we also need to create a log factory, and this is accessible through fix.screenlogfactory using, again, the fix settings object that we created using our configuration settings. Once all of this is done, we need to create our initiator object, inside of which will happen all the fun stuff to do with fix.io. And to do this, we need to call fix.socket initiator, pass in the fix instance that we've created earlier on of our pricing class, pass in the store factory that we created using our um, fix settings that were created using our configuration file, and finally the log factory. And then we simply call start. So that initializes the fixed connection using our configuration and authentication information. And if everything goes according to plan, we should be able to authenticate with the fixed server and start communicating commands back and forth in the form of fixed messages. So let's go ahead and see this in action as an exercise prior to us delving deeper into the pricing class in future tutorials, where we'll go about actually implementing the market data request functionalities, test requests, market data requests, these being send test request and send market data request. So the very first thing we need to do is initialize our pricing client. For this, we'll call this pricing and we'll initialize it using the class dwx underscore fix pricing client that you saw earlier over here. We're now going to pass in the configuration parameters. And for this, we'll pass in my configuration parameters, username and password. These will obviously be obfuscated as we go through this video. Once the pricing connection is created, we'll come back to the portion of the screen that matters to you in, in order to see how everything's working. Okay, now that I've authenticated with my details, we can see the fixed connection has been established successfully and we're seeing heartbeat exchanges between ourselves and the server. There are also some descriptive messages of who's heart beating at what point, at, and this allows us to see the communication uh, back and forth between the two entities, us and the server. So this essentially gives you an idea of how the session is established, how the pricing overrides work, Earlier on, we looked at to admin, from admin, to app, from app, on create, on logon, things like this. And this heartbeat exchange that you see on your screen right now, being part of the to admin and from admin functions, uh, whereby when these events are triggered, an appropriate message is fired onto the console indicating what's happened. In the next tutorial, we'll go deeper into the fixed pricing class and talk about how to go about sending market data requests and processing their responses from the server as well. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.